It was pretty gnarly. He said it was a life-saving surgery. If it went through my abdominal wall, I could have died. If the abscess popped, I could have died. So. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a good thing I got it done. Basically, I couldn't eat for two weeks, and yeah, not having anything go into you, just you lose weight like crazy. So really, this has been about trying to rebuild Jackson as an athlete. Right through. Good. As you can tell, I just had a massive one. Yeah. All right, a little, little ring to the dome, but. I had a good couple of weeks training, eating, putting weight back on, feeling good on the bike. Um, so yeah, he's just been sort of really excited, really stoked. This is what's on the on the menu for today. I got probiotic, multivitamin, and an omega-3 pill. I know the probiotic is to counteract all the antibiotics I've been taking, and I think the other ones are just for uh, for keeping me at uh, at the right level. Should I go for all in one? Gone. I do have a leftover Chipotle burrito, but try not to get breakfast thing. We're about five weeks uh, post-surgery from my appendix. Recovery was rough. It took a while, um, much longer than I expected, and, and it was going well for the first week, but um, after flying home, had some more problems come up, and, and that kind of kept me off the bike for a bit longer, and then, uh, and uh, yeah, that basically just kind of ruined my chances at, at being ready for Worlds. Basically, I couldn't eat for two weeks and yeah, not having anything go into you, just you lose weight like crazy. So yeah, I lost roughly 20 pounds, which is like 15% of my body weight, which is, uh, yeah, I'm not, not a big guy to start with. I've been able to gain roughly 10 back in the last uh, last two weeks or so, and it's gonna take a while for the for the last 10 pounds to to gain back. Woo. So, we got four eggs, four pieces of bacon, some avocado on a tortilla with some uh, some protein chocolate milk. So, should be a good uh, good start to the day. I've kind of over, over packed this burrito. It might be a bit interesting to try and eat, but we'll see. So that's good. Taste test, let's go. <laughs> God, this, Gordon Ramsay would like this one. <laughs> This isn't my best cooking, but it's definitely up there with, with really good cooking. It was still inflamed where the appendix should be. And that was basically the appendix trying to get away from that. And so it was like glued to my abdominal wall and it was trying to punch a hole through my abdominal wall just to get away from the like infected area I guess so it was it was pretty gnarly he said it was a life-saving surgery because if it went through my abdominal wall I could have died if the abscess popped I could have died so see the writing on, <laughs> on the edge <laughs> yeah kind of a good thing I got it done hear that one that was insane Oh. Yeah, I mean, I definitely noticed that the more training you do, the stronger and easier it is to ride. This is where I'm really sore. I put my arms behind my head and my back just comes up to compensate. Like, if I had to keep my back flat, it's as far as I can get my arms to go back. 
yeah, I've been training hard. Uh, I've had a good few weeks at home now, two and a half. Uh, I've been working with my trainer Damo a bunch, and and yeah, we've been trying to get uh, trying to get back up to to race weights and and uh, back ready on the bike. But yeah, still got a long ways to go. Jackson and I have worked on his preparation going into the season. So we'll do training prior to, we'll do his readiness for the World Cup season. We've done his work for two years as a world junior. Um, and now we're also then doing injury management and recovery. So washing my hands hurts because my pecs and everything are so sore. But ah, from, from last year. From yesterday. <laughs> Today will be more like anyway. Okay. So. We'll do some stuff on bike. I need a couple of jump profiles just to have them for you. Yeah. And then we'll load lower body. Um, and then we'll probably do some finish with some sled pushes and some city lift. I'm kidding. So really this has been about trying to rebuild Jackson as an athlete, to regain his energy, to build that foundation of strength, to connect with the strength that he had, and ultimately get back to producing power effectively. Been a long way. He's, you know, he's working back. He's always gained 10 pounds back, and he's training hard. Um, but there's still, still further work to do for him to sharpen up for that knife edge of time again. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. I'm absolutely wrecked now, and uh, yeah, I got to figure out what we're gonna do for the rest of the day. But um, yeah, it was a good sesh. He's been working me kind of harder and harder every day. I've been going uh, almost every day of the week. Uh, to go see him and, and try and gain some of that muscle back and it's been it's been really good but yeah he's working hard Today is my second day back riding a bike. Gonna just do a few cruisy laps, kind of see how I'm feeling. Work on uh, work on some more of actually bike skill than speed, and just kind of get in the feel of uh, feel of biking again. to the top but then uh, definitely definitely got tired <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I don't know. Just felt pretty pretty decent actually. Trails were running really good. Some some of the roots and stuff were really slick still, but dirt was fire, so yeah, can't complain. Yeah, I mean like the funny thing for me was like if you told myself ten years ago to uh that I was gonna win a World Cup in downhill, I would have I would have not believed you because you know I was kind of trending towards that slope style uh, aspect of it, and and yeah, um, you know if there's one thing to say, it'd just be uh, do everything. And I think that really helped me in my career, um, just by you know not focusing on on one aspect. I went through BMX, I went through dirt jumps, I went through you know racing and swallow and, and and trials even like I've done so many different aspects of sports that um, you know it really took a while for me to, to nail it down to what exactly what I want to do and yeah I think by by doing all those different aspects when I was younger it definitely helped me I quit was I recording yes that's the easiest thing I'll ever do on this bike. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I'm I'm really proud of myself and, and happy with how how I was able to recover from the injury and how I was able to get back up to speed pretty quickly. That's one thing that I feel like um, you know, I'm pretty good at it, I can be off the bike and give me a few days and, and I'll be back. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good to have that week of riding before just to, you know, have some fun and, 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 and just get bike time. Sure. So the fact that it's raining and there's only this many clouds, it's probably gnarly over there. Yeah, track's looking pretty sick so far. Um, we've only kind of got through the top flow section and then down into a little, small rock ride, and then this is kind of where it starts getting gnarly from here down. This rain is looking scary, but I don't think it's gonna actually do anything. So, yeah, have to see. Disgusting. That sucks. I'm not thinking about much line choice right now. Like, I'm more kind of focusing on like what my line would be for like, you know, first three runs tomorrow. And then definitely not gonna be the fastest line, obviously, but whatever I can make through. And then uh, I think the track's gonna change quite a bit with all the, you know, be practice and all the riders going down it. So uh, I'm gonna have to wait and see what works best. But right now it's, uh, I just saw a little a, a rider come down one of the pre-riders, but looks heinous. <laughs> Go on, Jackson. Vamos. Vamos. That was a first for me on a track walk like that. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I don't know how to ride that. It's all going to be a big learning curve tomorrow. Just watching the junior practice here yesterday. It rained a whole bunch, so track's probably not even close to being the same, but it's good to just get an idea of what's going on. 
We had some uh, pretty catastrophic weather when we went on track walk yesterday and that altered the track dramatically um, compared to like where the juniors were at. It's running nice, it's been dry and lovely all morning, so yeah, vibing. We had a good couple of weeks training, eating, putting weight back on, feeling good on the bike. He's amped to be back and you know, riding the, the world's bike that I got to build for him that he, uh, he hadn't seen properly until we got here. Um, so yeah, he's just been sort of really excited, really stoked. Andorra, World Cup number four, BP. Um, just headed up for first practice run. Oh, body is, uh, yeah, body's feeling sweet. No problems whatsoever anymore. Just, uh, yeah, stoked to go riding. Fourth World Cup of the year so far. We're here in Andorra. Just dropping in for the first uh, course preview for you guys here. A lot of photographers here, so got to do some steez for the boys. <laughs> you. These uh, top jumps are sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dog. Sick. Now we're into some technical rocks. We're at pretty high altitude here, close to 2,000 meters. So we're only about 30 seconds in. I'm already breathing. Big drop coming up. The views here are incredible. Ooh, felt a bit stiff there. Me too, bro. Fuck. We got tons and tons of rain yesterday, so track is uh, running primo. Woo! That bit's flat out to a gap. Yeah. Oh, yo. Oh, I aced that one. That was sick. Phew. Yeah, mountain biking is a hard one to explain. Like for me, I've been riding for 17 years since I was two years old, right? Like it's been, it's been a long journey and, and it's all I've ever known. So um, yeah, to pinpoint exactly what, you know, mountain biking is and what drives me to do it is hard, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just the best sport ever. It's good to have Jackson back after going through his whole episode with his appendix, um, losing a ton of weight and bouncing back for, for this round. Um, so yeah, good to have the full crew here. <laughs> the dream team. Gonna try a few different lines here. See how she goes. Hey man. Oh my god. Jesus. Hold it. You good? Yeah, I'm okay. As you can tell, I just had a massive one. Yeah. Alright. Little, little ring to the dome, but nothing major. Hips a little sore. But uh yeah, basically coming in off this little drop, there's like a shelf and I was just on the edge of the shelf, my front pushed and then hit the rock and just like sent me skew. And then I landed down here somewhere, kind of on my face and then just like crumpled into the tree. But stoked to, uh, stoked to be somewhat okay, but that one uh, wasn't ideal. Oh my god, he almost did the same thing. Fuck! This has been the shittest run of my life. Just got a flat as well. Uh, all right. Could be better. Yeah, I kind of rung the bell a bit. 
in the hip. Head's fine actually, but just dizzy. When I look at it, it never seems like he's having a bad time. Like the few times I've seen him maybe, we'll call it struggling, you know, but a day that he's struggling is my best day on the bike, you know, um, but he always seems to pull it together and he always seems to bounce back because I think genuinely he just loves it. He's just having fun, you know, he just spends as much time as he can on his bike and I think that just makes him a better rider each day and, you know, like I said, he's just positive and driven. Obviously, there's there's that element of he's got the got the leader's jersey, he is, take, he is leading the overall, but there's no pressure. He's already proved that he's got the pace, and from us chatting, he's always going to aim for a good result. He's always going to want to win, but um, just get some solid bike time, and then uh, yeah, see see where we end up. Bye. We are stoked. Um, body's still tight, but I think once you lock into uh, into like a race run mindset, kind of all that kind of stuff goes away. And yeah, I put down a pretty good run. Um, definitely, definitely took a few risks. There were sections that I, I, you know, was riding faster in practice, and and uh, sections that I was no braking. So you know, that's a that's a good thing, and I'm up there with the with the pace. But um, yeah, those top guys are flying, and uh, I got about you know, two seconds to make up for tomorrow. So yeah, stoked on the progress and we're always stoked with P3. Yeah, so finals day for Andorra was a, was a very interesting one for everyone. We got the message the night before that we were gonna have to wake up super early for a 7.30 practice and, and uh, it was supposed to be racing at 9.45 to, uh, to beat the weather. And then, um, yeah, so that kind of just set the whole uh, you know, program off and set everyone's mindset off and what to do. So we had to wake up at 5.30 and, and, and you know, get up to the tracks as soon as possible. Yeah, it was an interesting one for the mental, just not being used to that situation before. and. Um, The weather got worse at about nine, so then we had to delay, and it was more delays. And then... <laughs> Racing's on. Oh shit. Okay. So you don't have any problems to switch on straight away and be there for the race? Well, we'll see. It's, it's, I don't think anyone's been in this kind of scenario before, so it's, yeah. it's going to be a big learning curve for everyone. And yeah, I guess you know, switching on to that race mindset is going to be very important. And you know, whoever can do that is going to, going to do well. We do have Jackson Goldstone, on the winner of the last run. What I was planning for my run was to to test the waters a bit. Um, I wanted to, you know, see how the conditions were, um, see what the wind was doing, because that was a big factor. And then kind of, you know, once I found that groove of what it was running like, just stick to it and push really hard. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Jackson goes down to the Santa Cruz Syndicate. Winner, last time out in Val de Sole, Trentino. Yeah, I was coming off the start gate and, and it was so windy. And it was a first left-hand flat corner that you know, the wind was so gnarly that I turned in, and but it took my front wheel, and I and I almost blew the first corner. I was I was way offline, and uh, and then I was like, okay, the wind's doing that, so I was made made sure to you know adjust for the next few bit. But and freshly healed up. Here's 
his own worst enemy, his own appendix, fully sorted out now. Goldstone goes super high in that He's left looking for grip, he's looking for grip, you see his front wheel. 2.2, 2.1 back at the first split for Goldstone, but the Canadian is capable of some absolutely scintillating stuff on that big Santa Cruz V10. He, he, he would try anyway, he, he will. In the points, the overall points leader's jersey. Jackson Goldstone at 19 years of age. End of the bank! Chucks the back end out, makes it work, survives it, Goldstone. Yeah, he know, he know it's tricky, he know it's tricky, but he know maybe like, okay, more you go down, it's going to be a little bit better. He knows it'll be tricky, but Cedric, I cannot wait to see him dance his way through these lower woods. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to see right now, where it's fast and you have to release the brakes. Into this big shoot then, Goldstone reels the right-hander. Oh, you see the front wheel, he's looking for grip, the front wheel's going left and right. Still charging, but... What is this second oh. split going to say? Goldstone, 3.6. Hey, hey, Coulage was good, but 3.6 is durable. Into the rock section I mean, now. That it's middle line commits down the rider's left-hand side. Pops over done. that big rock and exit. Look good for Goldstone. Yeah, ni nicely done. He's trying hard. He's not throwing the top. Oh. Oh. Halfway into that stump. Lands one way in either side of that big stump. Commits to the line, no one rides out of it. He's cranking. He won more, he won more speed. Eight seconds back. Oh, flat tire! Flat tire, that will be oh, that, that big 50-50, yeah. On the 50-50 on that stop, he had the flat. I was just about to say, it's so impressive how much he could ask him that bike and get away with it. That's why he was pedaling. Yeah. Like we saw him pedaling, he's like, all right. And that would explain the slower speed trap as well. And you keep charging. Oh, oh bummer. Disappointment for the overall points leader then. Yes. Because he was he, he was not throwing the towel. No 12.2 back as you'd expect at four oh. then with that flat tire. But still moving quickly and I think yes. I could. Faster than I was on the ride. <laughs> yeah, really, really disappointing because so capable in sections yes. like this of the impossible Jackson oh, Houston. Still charge hard. The fans still loving it. He's got fans all over the world, and rightly so, this 19-year-old. He's been racing bikes for 17 of them. Goldstone down the line, 14.7 bikes. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, my mindset switched through, through the, uh, throughout the weekend. Like I was expecting, you know, to be, you know, top 30, top 20, still a bit, you know, far off the back. And then after qualifying third, I was like, okay, it's on. Like I can actually put down a good result here. And then, um, yeah, it's just the way she goes. But I was, I was stoked to, stoked to bring that momentum to Ludenville here. I'm, uh, yeah, feeling good.